Hey guys, we're back in Moscow and I, I wasn't really planning anything for this video. I just wanted to share some of my first impressions after spending two months in the US. And you know, first thing that surprises you in Moscow is that you don't see homeless people. And I don't want to say anything bad about those people because I know that growing up they did not picture themselves in those situations that they ended up in. So let's keep on walking and I'll show, I'll show some more of my thoughts, okay? Let's do it. Second thing I wanted to mention is the prices in Moscow are a lot cheaper than they are in New York City. And I'm mostly comparing to New York City because they are the biggest cities. So we got a hotel on Tverskaya Street, which is one of the central streets, for just $40 a night, which is great, with the breakfast included. That's a great deal. Another thing you immediately notice in Moscow is that people are trying to impress other people. That's what they refer to as conspicuous consumption. People are still stuck in the paradigm of trying to say that, hey, look how much, look how far I have come. You know, I've, I was able to buy this BMW. You see a lot of Porsches. I'm pretty sure we'll see some exotic cars. We'll see a lot of limos. So people are all about like uh, trying to impress other people. But at the same time, like comparing to some, some cities in the US like Chicago, they don't have to be afraid of carjackings those don't happen here you know some people in Chicago told me that they wouldn't buy a nice car because they're afraid to be carjacked that's not good of course all right we'll continue our tour of Moscow stopped to get some food and I got a tuna sandwich pretty good uh, 600 rubles tuna sandwich eggs and even black caviar isn't that amazing I ordered uh, chicken salad probably it's like a uh, classic scissor Okay. And lemonade, maracuya, with passion fruit with um, tarpoon. They actually gave me gloves to start with the sandwich because I might get messy. Let's do it. Oh, one check. Behind me is the first McDonald's they opened in the USSR. And when it, when it was opening on that day, they had thousands of people lining up to go and try an American burger, which was, you know, everybody dreamed about it. Like America was just something too far away, you know, it's like, it was like another planet. So trying, you know, it was like the easiest way to touch America, to try an American burger. And you see this place is still popular today, this crowds of people, and we're gonna pass because we already had something to eat, right? Okay, let's go. Moscow is clean, you know, compared to New York, you don't see a lot of garbage on the streets. You see it's extremely clean and there's no bad smells. Walking in Manhattan, sometimes it smells nice, sometimes it smells absolute terrible. You're like, oh, gotta speed up, you know, gotta get right away from this because, you know, somebody might have taken a dump or something, I'm taking a pee. I hate to say it, but that's what it is, but you don't see it in Moscow. Another thing you notice is the huge income gap of Moscow. So when we landed uh, in Moscow, we were taking the air, uh, a taxi from the airport. First thing I saw was a Rolls Royce. You know, during the two months that I spent in the U.S., I only saw two of those. You know, and uh, it took 15 minutes in Moscow to see a Rolls Royce. And as you can see, there's a nice uh, Mercedes, and just uh, around the corner we saw a Lada, which is like $300. So.
this part of Moscow is called Patriarche Prudy, and it's a it's a very popular place with party goers, lots of cafes, uh, nightclubs, I guess, and it's more of like affluent area of Moscow. So an apartment here, you're looking at probably half a million dollars, maybe more. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in public. Yeah. You yeah. can ask my friend. Absolutely. What's your name, man? Oh, my name is Maxim. Where do you come from? I come from France. And you've lived in Russia for how long? About two years now. Okay. Well, tell me three things you love about Russia and th that are different from France. Okay. I like the fact that uh, um, women are not uh, uh, the most uh, materialistic uh, person in the planet. People on the planet. Uh, second, I uh, like the fact that uh, I don't have to vote, you know, uh, I don't have to do that in the morning. And then third, like, uh, no one uh, will judge me if I'm an alcoholic. If you want. An alcoholic. Because <laughs> you kind of fit in with the crowd, right? Yes. <laughs> hey, Elena. Why don't you buy me a Coke? <laughs> I'm about to buy it. Так вы меня не надо снимать. Так, так, всё, понял. Mm -hmm. So another observation is that people are dressed more conservatively here. You don't really see a lot of people like pink hair, green hair. You know, everybody's dressed like nice and uh, pretty conservative, just like I am. You know, simple stuff. Another thing about Moscow is it's gigantic. You know, just look at it. To go from one place to another is almost like 20, 25 minutes. And I'm a fast walker, okay? So a lot of times you have to rely on a taxi or a subway. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to reach anything. Whereas in like Manhattan, you can walk from Central Park all the way down in like 45 minutes. So it's a very different story. But in Moscow, oh boy, you see me walking, right? It's gonna take me forever. Prices also, you know, when you think about like internet services and taxi, taxi is extremely affordable. We uh, just ordered a taxi to go to uh, Zeranyi Park, which is about two miles from here, and it's only going to cost us four dollars. You know, a lot, a lot cheaper. Another thing, when it comes to people, it doesn't come as a surprise that a lot of Russians are camera shy. You know, you point a camera at them, and they're like. I don't feel like being on camera today or right now, you know. And uh, in America, it's all about like, oh, you know, you're gonna give me some publicity. You're gonna, you know, you're gonna make me famous. I want to say my Instagram because I have something to offer, some service, some product, and that's the biggest difference. And also, Russians are very reserved. Again, I'm talking about the majority. There are some people that are more like extroverts. They're hungry for attention, but when it comes to like the general public, uh, that's my impression compared to America. Uh, 
underground passages is another story. You know, in America, walking in an underground passage, you would be like, let's get out of here. But here, it's like, it's all right. It's great, but actually, street musicians here, it's actually very enjoyable. We have come to Zaryadi Park, which is one of the new, new developments in Moscow. Very nice park. But what sets it apart is this thing, the observation deck that kind of sticks, uh, uh, sticks out on top of a highway. So we get some good views now. So, Lana, what's your first impression of Moscow? People are very stylish. It looks like everybody prepare and like make up and dress well before they uh, went to the streets, walking around, and it's so beautiful. It's like really, really stylish. And people are, especially girls, skinny. It's like <laughs> like you are. <laughs> Probably after all the burgers in America. Okay, <laughs> good stuff. So you might wonder, where's all the homeless people? And that's the question I've been asking myself. And I asked the taxi driver, I said, are there any homeless people in, in Moscow? And he said, sure. They're just, they push them to the back streets. But there's still not as many of them as you see in America. There's still some, I know there's got to be some. It's a certain percentage of uh, any society that don't fit in. Somehow something happened to them that they, they cannot continue working as they used to. You know, it's a mental disorder, it's something else, you know. And there's still some people that are not as it's, it, the situation is not nearly as bad as in the, in the US. I mean, you don't see it at all. Looking at the Russian crowd, you're like, why is everybody so skinny compared to Americans? Me included. Like, are they eating well? I'm pretty sure they're eating well. It's just that we don't have so many fast food chains. A lot of us are cooking at home, and that's why we're kind of skinny. <laughs> So, like I said, in Moscow you feel safe, and right now it's 9.50 p.m. It's dark, lots of people outside. It's basically like a rooftop. You're sitting on a bridge, nice view. Some people drinking alcohol, and, you know, basically a nice view for free, for free. You don't pay for that. It's funny you ask Americans sometimes in places like Philadelphia and you know other dangerous cities like it, it, what about the crime and they're like oh don't worry about it it happens in every major city well let me tell you what it doesn't it doesn't and like here I feel very safe and you don't have to wait for uh, you know, I'm not scared someone's gonna sucker punch me or I uh, get a straight bullet from a shootout, you know. It just doesn't happen. It might happen, but the chances are next to zero, you know. Здравствуйте, как зовут вас? Меня зовут Антон. Наталья. Вы всегда в Москве жили? Нет. Откуда приехали? С Челябинска. О, классно. Мы с Екатеринбурга. Скажите, в центре Москвы, вот сейчас находясь, вы безопасность чувствуете себя безопасно? 
Да, конечно. Угу. Очень хорошо. Да. Да. Что нравится в Москве? Три, три вещи, да, упростим. А, три причины. Красивый город, уровень жизни и возможности, которые открывает столица. Всегда себя видите в Москве или куда-то еще планируете? Пока не вижу. Пока не вижу. Если из Москвы, то, наверное, другая страна. Какая страна? Как... Нет, это я образно говоря. А, что куда? Это... Да, куда? Да, 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 да. То есть, если это, то... What did you get? Some ice cream. Some ice cream? Yeah. Chocolate ice cream. Oh, that's pretty cream. cool. What flavor is that? Chocolate ice cream. Oh, okay. So we've been walking down Moskva, down to Gorky Park, listening to the wind of change. And honestly, it's uh, 10.30 p.m. Everybody's out there enjoying themselves. Nice music, fountain show. I love it. Another thing that's really popular in Moscow is car sharing. And we figured it was about 30 minutes to walk to the hotel. And I just saw a car, it's a car sharing car, Yandex Drive. And I said, let's just go get it. You know, have a nap, so. Just unlocked it. Good to go, Lena. Jump in. We'll be there in no time. Uh, seven minutes to go, and it's 10 rubles per minute, so it's gonna be like 70 rubles, which is one dollar. You know, can't beat that. It's 11:20 right now. So five minutes later, here we are. There is a car that I parked. There's another car, sharing car. It was only about five minutes of driving, and it cost me 60 rubles, so it's like less than a dollar. Hey, Lena, what's the time? It's 11.30 p.m. Oh, wow. And the city's still partying, right? So this morning I've counted seven Maybachs, went for a walk in the morning and I saw seven Mercedes Maybachs, okay? And the funny thing is five of them were parked in front of McDonald's. I think it's uh, drivers of, of these cars, you know, before they have to go to work, they go to McDonald's to get to grab some lunch. And it was funny, like five Maybachs in front of uh, McDonald's. Maybe they're still there. We'll go check them out. <laughs> you gotta run away, guys. Okay. You're about to get sprinkled. <laughs> Okay, we, we made it. <laughs> this guy is getting the ticket. Parked in a handy in a handicapped spot. You don't do that. I've met my friend Katya, and she used to live in Ekaterinburg. Now she lives in Moscow. But what's interesting and what I want to talk about is because she has this experience of staying in New York City for six months, is that correct? That was lovely, yes. You loved it, you loved it. <laughs> so my question would be about living in Moscow right. and living in, in New York. All right, let's try doing this. Uh, let's do it one by one. Okay. Where did you feel safer? Uh, I felt safer, I feel safer equally, like okay. pretty much. Like, well, Moscow, New York place, right? But like, if there is an accident, I know I'm safer in Moscow because uh, I got free medical care. Oh yeah, that makes sense. You know, things you want to do today, how many events are happening on one particular day, would you say, which city has more to offer? New York! <laughs> That's New York for sure! Well, at least the events I care for more. I mean, like, it's still... Like, when I moved to Moscow, I needed to create events I care for. I mean, like, um, I think uh, uh, here in Moscow, it's more like, you know, uh, like, uh, how cool you look, uh, how... Like, it's about, like, uh, 
I mean, how how you present yourself, and it's all about image, and it's it's le it's like it's like people a little more scared like to show their vulnerable parts. And when I was in New York, I've, even New York is considered to be like it's like a, a bit uh, posh, and like there, there are like you know. Um, rich people yeah. but i've met rich people i've met people uh who have like who live by the central park right and i felt like i can talk to them and uh, like i could connect and we can discuss things and if you're talking about events like oh my god there are so many exactly. and are, like i mean like and maybe you can Maybe I didn't go to the expensive events and maybe they're also posh and cool and like you need to really look a special certain way. But like when it was like um, to go to the brewery or to the comedy like you know event in the cafe uh, or story like slam thing or maybe like you know just to sit with somebody in the park and listen to the music and just chat. That's my favorite thing and New York is like full of it. Right. So that was my impression too. It seems like in Moscow people are care care so much about impressing other people with with what they have, and it seems like in in New York and in, in the U.S. In, in general, people care more about like investing, making sure that their family family's future is secure. You know, kind of a they might live in a really nice house that's worth millions of dollars, and then just drive a regular car five years old, you know. Not really care about my, uh, buying a Mercedes. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, but, it's more But, but in Moscow, it's more about, like, look what I'm driving. It's like new money effect, I think. It's still, like, relatively new. I mean, like, I feel like in U.S., even though it's not such a long history, just a few hundred years, it's still money are, uh, like, relatively old. There are people who are like, oh, it's okay not to show off. Like, I mean, like, I know I'm worthy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like you know why would I like wear all these not very comfortable clothes while, when I can wear a t-shirt and right. jeans and like be just a guy like you know <laughs> so and here I think we are still on that stage but I think it, it would come I think some people already there they don't need to but not too many maybe but what it is you learned about US that impressed you most well, I've learned to love New York City. That's something that kind of... Oh, I hated it before. Oh! You see, a lot of... And I think that's the situation for a lot of people because they come to New York a couple of days. No, and yeah, it's, I get you know, it. And they carry that luggage all over the streets. And right, uh, it's right. just so uncomfortable. It's kind of like surviving New York before you see the real right. America. That was my impression. It was like, oh, okay. a couple of days in New York. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll get to see... Uh, what was that? Uh, some shows, you know, things you gotta do, you know, check, right, check right, the boxes. Check, check, check That's right. But <laughs> this time, I really learned to enjoy it because right. I was driving. I felt like I was just another guy living mm, there. I, we blending, for, that's the key. That's for for the a few key. days, we lived in, in uh, outside of New York in New Jersey. Right. So you would kind of drive in, find a park, and go see this. You know, we walk in. Uh, you enjoying it. And yeah, I got to see all these different neighborhoods, and uh, I have a very uh, a better understanding of what the city is all about. Mm, right, right. So that, and uh, then also, well, I, I got to see so many new cities and bigger cities. Before that, my uh, exploration of, of U.S. was limited to like smaller cities and towns. Mm, I and see. Uh, now I got to see all the cities in Texas and Chicago and all that. You know, big city life kind of. So. That's the revelation of this trip. All right, all right. No, I, get, I get the feel. I get the feel. Hopefully, we'll see it in the videos which are to come. Okay. We're all looking for them and waiting. Uh, so, I have another question. I'm curious how New York City people are different from the people like in the other parts of the US. Uh, well, do you feel uh, really Oh, I mean, absolutely. I mean, walking the streets of New York, sometimes you get this feeling you're not in America at all because you hear all these different. Uh, languages and people from all over. This guy, music to my yeah, ears. This guy like selling corn dogs is listening to some uh, Middle Eastern music. Right. You're like, where am I? In Turkey? What's going on? Right, right. You're traveling from yeah. like across and the then, world. Like you know, Lena and I we took a trip to this. Uh, it's called Boro. Uh, Boro, Lena. Boro something. Well, that's where a lot of uh, Orthodox uh, Jews. Jews live, and so. All of a sudden, you see uh, different cuisine, different people. Uh, different culture. Very different culture. We went to uh, this Queens part of 
New York, you know, Queens is huge. Mm -hmm. It's like a city by itself. And we went to this uh, Flushing district where we met this guy that we knew. Uh, and it's predominantly Asian. Mm -hmm. And we went to Queens Botanical Garden, and all of a sudden you find yourself in Hong Kong. That's nice. Like everybody's Asian, you know, and they speak, you know, I had to practice my uh, Mandarin. I was able to. Oh, really? Like, you all know, of a sudden, you know you the Mandarin. Wow, uh, I, I, I do, I do a little bit. And, but you're still in New York. Right. Like, that's the beauty of it, you know. Have you Why? met any celebrities? Uh, don't think so. I've met so many, I'm sorry. Okay, so there was like Gwyneth Paltrow, there was Matthew McConaughey. I mean, like, I haven't like met, met them, but there is like a, a, an Apple store in Soho, and there's a tiny, like, really small, like, you know, a theater there where they're like on the second floor where they invite like you know celebrities and you can see people like like you and me like you know like maybe a couple of meters away from them I would always come in advance and see like in the first row and like they, they would like you know talk about their movie that was coming up and uh, I was uh, like you know sitting right in front of them like you know and you could ask questions wow and I was so scared I mean like I was like you know, so starstruck <laughs> like oh my god all these people from the TV Okay, so uh, there was this uh, uh, girl, Julia, oh my god, she was like in Dexter, like, you know, I forgot her name, but she was like in some teen movie, uh, 10 Things I Hate About You. Uh, she was like a girl playing there, it's like all teenage, like an you know, old movie, and uh, she was like a, uh, in a new YouTube series, and she was presenting it, and uh, Julia Stiles, but that was her name, and I was like, I have a question, and like, and they were recording the podcast, like the you know, Apple podcast, like from all those interviews, and my shaky voice, I don't remember what I asked, but my shaky voice was giving away. So you made it on the podcast. Yes, That's I made, cool. I That's made cool. her arms from me. I was like, oh my god, I'm so. I'm so a part of it. <laughs> no, see, that's the thing about it. Everybody's just a human. We make them bigger than I human, do. but they are. They have their uh, vulnerabilities and all that. I know, human, human, but when, they're and, still stars. Right, and I never, I never wanted to be anybody important. And so when people are like, oh, you're that guy making the videos. Yeah. I'm like, well, I'm just a guy, you know, I'm just a guy. What do you expect of me? <laughs> Because what kind of, of your personality is still leaking in? You say that this uh, uh, Bulgarian guy said, oh, you're uh, the same... The same humble said, guy. Humble mm -hmm. guy as you are in your videos. Uh, and uh, like, uh, so some personality of yours is leaking through, even if, though you're behind the camera. Right. Could you, could you uh, like, kind of analyze what other traits of yours are leaking in? I think it's not being too cheesy and uh, annoying and uh, I guess humble. You okay, know. what means uh, cheesy, not too cheesy? What does that mean? Oh, okay. It's like uh, trying to appeal to everybody. Oh, okay. So you're like, you know, I uh, have my being point. Being probably like overexcited, say we order something, I say, oh, this is so fantastic. I've never had anything <laughs> like this before. <laughs> you guys have to try this oh one. <laughs> you know, and I'm like, watch now. Like, oh, man, I'm tired. Even though you can. Right? <laughs> right. Oh, I know, I know. Yeah, like, yeah, I know. Yeah, Especially, you know, when people are trying different foods and uh, it's just so expect. It's, uh, you, you know, they're going to be excited. They're trying to, and then they give two seconds pause and they're like, mmm, it's good. Like, I knew you would do that. <laughs> you know, like, like mm, I can't eat that. You've got to impress right. me next time. <laughs> What's the point? <laughs> Before we say goodbye to Katja, I, want, I, I just thought, you know, she has a very cool story of relocating to Moscow from Yekaterinburg and she did it with zero money in her pocket or next to zero. You want to tell me about that? Okay, so uh, uh, I came back from Yesk heartbroken. I was in love with an American guy and uh, uh, I was like, I couldn't get, like I didn't get the visa to go back and I was like, oh, I'm so sad, so sad, so sad. Uh, and I decided if I can go to yes, I'll go the next best thing, I'll move to Moscow. And I was uh, uh, like, you know, um, I didn't like, you know, uh, have a lot of money. So I put 5,000 rubles, which is- Which is uh, less than a hundred dollars. Like, like 80 bucks, pocket, 80 bucks. Uh, but like, and I bought my train ticket because it's cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> One way to Moscow, my friend gathered uh, at the railway station in Europe and said, here's the ticket back, <laughs> anytime, it's prepaid, <laughs> and I'm like, that's so sweet. So when I came to Moscow, I stayed with my grandma's friend, <laughs> I had, like on the outskirts of Moscow, and I slept on the um, couch, which was this, like, long, so like this. 
Right. <laughs> and I was looking for a job everywhere. And like the thing that I found, which was suiting me, I came to Moscow with a plan. I really wanted to teach, uh, to like you know, learn about storytelling, teach storytelling. I thought it's like the key to the things I want to do, the difference I want to make. I want to teach people in Russia being freer with their stories, to feel like the power and like being able to tell and share and to connect better. So like kind of work with this Soviet background. So and like that's why I needed a job and I came to the hostel like I can do hostels. I've been doing it for four years in Yekaterinburg. <laughs> can I like you know work like two days and two days have off and that's how I organized my club and uh, like worked here and get through and I met my husband in the hostel and we wow. rented an apartment and now we have a baby and uh, I still teach storytelling. <laughs> and how long have you lived in Moscow now? Well it's been like five and a half years. Five and a half years. Yeah. Okay. A lot of time, God! <laughs> I guess that shows you you can do whatever you want to do in life. If you really want it. If you really want it. <laughs> well, if there's a passion in your heart. <laughs> like perseverance, guys. Perseverance. <laughs> well, That's it? it just yeah. really need to want it. Oh, okay. <laughs> what are we eating today? Uh, we ordered Akroshka. This is uh, Russian summertime soap, it's called basically like a uh, uh, zimni salad, like olive with kvass. That's right. <laughs> yeah, it's I like add some uh, hren. Horseradish. Horseradish and uh, sour cream. All right, let's take a look at what it looks like. Yeah, basically it's like salad with kvass. Mm -hmm. It's a summer soup. And we uh, were drinking mors, which is a berry drink. Fantastic, but it's really hot outside. Mm -hmm. And they wouldn't let us in because we haven't been vaccinated and we don't have those QR codes. Terrible. But our main dish is ribs. Because it's a rib restaurant and some veggies. 